So now we have our parents and we have our fitness. So now we can uh, perform crossover. Actually, we just need the parents. The crossover function accepts the score and the crossover function inside it calls for the list of parents for the new generation. So, based on our roulette algorithm, we get our number of parents. Note that we have a probability of crossover of 90%. And then it is exactly what we said. This is a single point crossover. So we determine a cross point randomly. And then the child is simply the DNA matrix of parent one from the first element to the cross point and the DNA matrix of the second parent from the cross point to the end. So there is crossover. Very simple. And that is what makes this genetic algorithm, makes this a genetic algorithm. All right, so now mutation. Due to the way we encoded our DNA, this is a delightfully easy step. We have a probability of mutation. Uh, note I chose a high mutation, 5% uh, probability of mutation. We have a fairly short DNA string. But then we simply say, OK. So here is a matrix giving the, uh, effectively giving the indices of places where this random matrix is less than our desired probability. And then our matrix of those indices is the flipped value of, those, of the matrix of those indices. To mutate is not to mutate. So very nice, very concise, and that performs what we need it to. So uh, uh, just real quick, here's the first generation. How we make the first generation, simply randomly choosing a whole bunch of values for the B matrix. Uh, you could submit an initial guess for B if you wanted to encode that in, but I did not. I made it completely random. And then new generation. To make the new generation, there's simply three basic steps. Here is the elitism. So we find the best value, store it in the elite array for later. The new DNA matrix equals mutation of the crossover of the DNA matrix given the score. And that's it. That's the magic. This is where all the magic happens. After we get the new DNA matrix, of course, we complete the elitism. We overwrite the first value with the elite array. And that's basically what we accomplish here. This section here is simply to make sure we don't have any zero values. Zero values produce uh, singular singularity problems in our uh, particular problem. So I simply get rid of them and replace them with five times the smallest allowed value. OK. So that's it. We simply go through a while loop where we calculate the fitness of our DNA. Here, here, here is the whole algorithm that we run through after initialization. Uh, calculate the fitness, we graph it for our own sake, and make a new generation. And just run it and run it and run it. And then in the end, choose the best matrix, the best parameters from the final generation and return them. Okay, so let's see how this works on our volcano problem. Well, here's the volcano code. We load the data. We define the model here. Here's our two uh, functions, the value model for the temperature and the chi-square function. Here's the optimization step. We're going to compare against the MATLAB F min search algorithm. And here is our genetic al algorithm search, where here are the maximum values we allow for the base temperature, the max temperature, x and y value, and the standard deviation, the precision we ask for for each of them, and plotting down below. So let's see what happens. Here we are tracking the chi-square values by the generation. The red value, the red line, is the elite value. Here, here's a legend. And the black is the average. 
the average uh, chi-square value of all the organisms in our generation. Note we start very high, quickly come down, and then keep stochasticity in here as we want. This is noisy because we are searching the whole space, but we preserve our best value through the whole time. And then, here is our result. This is what we get with the MATLAB minimizer. It produces a chi-square value of 24.53, and here is our result from our genetic algorithm optimizer, a chi-square of 24.56. So this, in fact, did an excellent job, and I've had very good success with the uh, mutation and crossover rates as uh, listed in, in the code. I, I consistently get values right around here. And we can take a look. Let's take a look just to see how how well, just looking by eye, we can see how well the curve fits the data. And we can see that for a Gaussian, this fits, well, with a chi by i, this fits really well. So we're happy about that. Okay, so that is the volcano example. We optimized the chi-square function and it produced a very good result in 300 generations. And it didn't take very long, even though the code was not at all optimized for speed. So this is an example of how genetic algorithms can be used for a computational statistics problem. Now I'd like to real quick show you my favorite example of what genetic algorithms uh, has been used <laughs> to solve. Here's my favorite problem. So, here is a website called boxcar2d.com where it uses genetic algorithms to select successful cars for a given terrain. Each car is defined by a few parameters. Uh, there are eight vectors, eight vectors from the center spoke that define the body. You can here is a place to play around with um, the parameters just to see what they do. You can change the magnitude and angle of the vectors. Um, you can change the axle angles for the wheels. You can change the wheel radius. Um, you can change what, v what vertex the wheel is attached to. Um, and you can even change the number of wheels. And this is a com this is a completely general way of defining a car. And you can see, by looking at this, this can be easily translated into a chromosome, just like we did with our volcano example. Convert each of these to binary, make a long string. In fact, I, I believe this algorithm is performed exactly as I did the volcano example. Um, quick note, the t there are some properties of the car associated with the body size. The torque uh, is a function of how large the body is. So you need some body mass in order to have a valid car. And the car mass is defined also by the size of the body. And then these cars are simply dropped onto a terrain and allowed to go as far as they can, and that's their fitness function. So we'll take a look.